I just went on to the website where the, the survey was done and uh, uh, typed the questions out and then uh, uh, did an average of what the scores were. We saved it as a spreadsheet and just did a, an average of the scores. And those are the numbers you see over at the right. Again, the scoring was a one was strongly disagree, two somewhat disagree, and then up to five was strongly agree, and I think all the questions were written out. So the five would be the more positive result, the way that it was worded. So I think if you go through, and actually questions one through 31, um, got an average of those of 4.18, which I think most, to me, is an indicator that people are somewhat you know, satisfied with the school. Um, <coughs> Most of the numbers were in the fours, as you can see there. I uh, had a couple, two or three, I think, were just, just under four, 3.9 something. So I think those are still fairly positive in nature. Uh, we did ask, um, I think the board had asked about, uh, asked questions about lengthening the school day. That was, um, I guess, question 33. of adding five days to the school year. We had 52 said yes, 56 said no. So that was pretty close to what people thought. And then we followed, just followed that up with question 34. If five days were added, would you prefer to be in the beginning, the end, or mixed? And, uh, those were uh, not too many people wanted them to start the year off, so we were going to do that. So. Um, we didn't, uh, I don't know what, one of the other things that was talked about, school day, but we're going to an eight period day that the length of the school day is going to have to be affected by the minute count because of more passing time. So we didn't we didn't address that. But most of the other questions in here are, are very similar or the same as what we did uh, last year. Um, if you add more days to the year, would you still have to lengthen it or could you pick them up by going more days? If we were to add days, I mean that would help with our time a little bit for spending instructional units and that type of thing. Um, yeah, I guess my own personal opinion on that, Mike, is if we're going to an eight period day, I wouldn't want to, I guess I would want to lengthen the day because I think you, you end up, if we wouldn't lengthen the day and go to eight periods, I'm not too sure, I'm too sure some of your classes are, are long enough. I, I have a problem with classes that are 40 some minutes long high school. I don't think it's really enough time to, you know, present the material, give kids time to do some work in class and that type of thing. I, personally, I prefer having 52, 53 minutes, 54, 55 minutes would be good. And I know some schools go down to 45, and I think that's really pushing it. So you want to add another 15, 20 minutes every day? Uh, it, it'll add just on the, with the break time in between, it'll probably add 12 minutes or so. I would assume next year we'd be looking to start around 8.10 and going to around 3.40, maybe 3.36, 3.38, something like that. I don't think we put times on a schedule yet. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, it won't be five minutes. I think some of that is so that No, no, it doesn't have to be exact. You don't want to. But if you start doing stuff.
Some of the other schools around here are all going to have to be on the same time frame, too. Yeah. And they'll, they'll be, they're fairly close, I think, at the yeah, three-day three period. They, they, they don't differ a whole lot. Three. This is a big what, 335 is probably about the most time? Mm -hmm. When I was at Hill, we had a couple of classes. We took over satellite, and they started on the hour. So we really had I don't know that there were anything in there. <laughs> I see the communications good for it's easy to talk to the school administrators. So that was good. I've already been talked to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Close to the go. highest score. <laughs> well, one bad thing about this, you can have two or three parents that give you a D. You know, and we have two or three that give you an A, and you don't find those low ones. Gave us, and it was kind of across the board. Did you guys look at that survey, Nick? You know, when you pointed it out that there was two people that constantly gave us a negative rating no matter what. Mm -hmm. Your three and five are real high too. So I guess I, I was I was okay with it. You know, then yeah. when you look at um, like this three nine seven, um, the teachers keep me informed of how my child is doing. That's kind of a tough one because all they have to do is log on to PowerSchool. You know, the days of us having to get on the phone and call them constantly. Log on to Power School. It's right there. You know, they they know. And I thought that one was interesting because I was talking to to somebody. I, it wasn't even from uh, this district about that though. That you know the communication thing and having having that information available on Power School, and they were really quite negative about um, having a system like that. They they didn't didn't like that necessarily. So I, I thought that was kind of interesting. But you know that person. And I think as, as a faculty and as an administrator, it's very easy to say, all you have to do is log on to power. I mean, everything is on the website. It's all right there. You have access to it with a click of a mouse. And Make it feel yeah. like doing, uh, always want to talk to the teacher before they go, right? Where they go. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. And, and I think, you know, I do know that they're having meetings with parents, and I know they're doing those things because I sit in there with them. You look at number 12, my child enjoys going to school, 4.29. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it kind of yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and I, I always felt that, but I have heard some people say, what, what kid don't want to go to school, though? My kid doesn't either, yeah, I mean, he doesn't yeah. have a choice. Yeah, well, you're not going to get 100% because some kids aren't going to be, but when you're at 4.39, that's pretty high. I mean, mm -hmm. so. So are these exact same questions as last year? I mean, can you compare? They're, yeah, they're pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. We, we did eliminate some of the questions on last year because I think four or six of the questions dealt with um, um, uh, the eight period day that yeah. you know making that transition. So we just took those you know off. I don't know. I, I think most of our kids are pretty happy in the hallways. I mean, you walk through the halls and they will speak to you and they will kind of let you know if they see somebody in the building that they're not sure of. And, you know, so, so 
Same thing, you get less parent teacher contact because the kids go on the computer and they don't have to really teacher like stuff. Like. I think, yeah. And I agree. I, I kind of agree with Mr. Green. It's still nice to have to have to be a teacher. And they, and they do send those home. I'll put in there and notice because it's constantly in a journal after school. They can send them home. Um, I'll have to contact. And I do know that I teach. They carbon me on all their emails too. And so there's a lot of email conversations going on too. A lot of times I know teachers call people if something was due or something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, they call them right away because they want to make sure they're taken care of. Okay, moving on to the action items. Approve on first and second reading changes to board policy 402.50, employee income protection. says what it needs to say that uh, uh, the employees can purchase their own disability insurance and through the provider the school district uses and uh, then we use the monthly payroll deductions and, uh, and, and the reason we we do that is uh, for the employee if, if they purchase that if they're if they end up collecting on that uh, disability insurance and they have paid the premium then there's no taxes where if the district has paid the premium so it's really a benefit to the employee to do it. I'll move to approve our first second reading changes to policy, board policy 402.5, the employee income protection plan. I'll second that. It's been moved and seconded. Roll call. Bob? Yes. Mike? Yes. Alden? Yes. Marilyn? Yes. Vicki? Yes. Myself, yes. Next item is approve on first and second reading changes to board policy 402.09, recognition for service of employees and others. This is the policy that was reviewed and comments about the, we did, it, it, it didn't deal with the staff members that were, what was it, over 20 years, I think, what we would do with them. So we just added step number four in there, which is, um, I think three deals with the 20 years, and then step four would be at 20, basically every five years after that, there would be, uh, they receive one day of additional paid personal leave. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve the first and second reading, changes to board policy 40209, recognition for service of employees and others. I'll second it. It's been moved and seconded. Roll call. Vicki? Yes. Marilyn? Yes. Alden? Yes. Mike? Yes. Bob? Yes. Myself? Yes. Next item is to approve the 2012-2013 audit. I was actually kind of surprised we had this first board meeting. Uh, oh, when was the out? Two, two weeks ago? Three weeks ago? I was really surprised when we dropped this off last uh, a week ago, Friday, I think it was, and we got it back, I think, because I don't think it's even if he'd even been out to some of the schools yet. Because I know when he brought it that day, he says, well, he was headed to one place where he had a few issues to take care of. So, uh, But uh, anyhow, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Mike is really good to work with. I think I'm good and I both enjoy working with him. He comes out kind of ahead of time the day or whatever and gathers some information. And I think this year he left by, I don't know, he wasn't here until probably 8.30 and left. I was gone, I guess, two but at 2.30, sure. 2 o'clock. So he really gets the information put together in a hurry and uh, uh, is always good about answering questions or if we've, you know, if we've got to you know, want to know something about maybe how we should be coding something or improving things. He does, uh, he does a really good job with that. And I also want to mention that um, I, I think whenever, you know, whenever I talk to him about coming, I think he, he likes coming to, to Plainview because things are in order and that's a compliment to I.M.G. Always has things laid out and uh, easy to find. So.
we've all read it word by word. <laughs> well, if you didn't find it, I won't find it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll make a motion to approve the 2012-13 audit report. I'll second. It's been moved in second to approve the 2012-13 audit report. Roll call. Myself, yes. Vicki? Yes. Marilyn? Yes. Alden? Yes. Mike? Yes. Bob? Yeah. Thank you. It's actually I submitted it to the state today. So. <laughs> <laughs> Next item to discuss and act on is changing graduation requirements to include economics. I've had the pleasure of going to three department of meetings and we have another one coming up. Um, graduation and actually Corey is here, so he's gonna get it again. Um, being a social science teacher in the upper elementary. Economics has become a huge part of the standards. We actually need to offer an economics class. I realize social studies is not tested yet, but if they throw a test out, we won't meet rules and requirements either. So I think we can do this, and I, and I have been working on the schedule, and I think the schedule is pretty complete for next year already, minus throwing in the elementary specials and those kinds of things. It's, it's fairly complete for the secondary. We could, and this is, if, this is how you agree to it, it only needs to be a semester class. Um, I was talking with Mr. Janata about geography. So that we could put the geography at five credits, economics five credits, and that would still make up their 40 credits. So we're not really changing the number of credits that they need. Uh, we thought, and then that could go opposite the speech nine class, which works really well because there will be enough to split them in half still. And so there'll be two sections of the speech nine. And so if you're not in the one section, you'll be in the world geography section. And then by the time they're juniors, then basically they'll get another required class that they have to take, but it has to be in the social science department. Because that's where they say economics should be. So what's the other going from a year, like a year class to a semester? semester. Mm -hmm. But we added world history back in here because those two things were actually combined into one class, which was virtually impossible to do. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's still, I mean, technically our kids could get 60 hours because current issues, there's room in the schedule to put current issues back in there to go back into the eighth period day. So they could get about 60 social science credits if they wanted to take electives and those kinds of things. So, it, I mean, basically all it changes is it moves geography to five, add economics as five, and they're still at their 40 required that they have to have. So Janata would be teaching you? Mr. No. Schumacher would be. The schedule is full. And it would be, what's the curriculum? It's, it, you have to find a curriculum for it? Is that one? I mean, we have to buy books, we would have materials, to buy books. Mm -hmm. so it's got to be developed yet? The class, yeah, whoever teaches it will have to develop the class. But, I mean, basically, the standards are your curriculum. Right. I mean, they tell you this is what they have to know, so. I'm not sure why we would spend hours upon hours rewriting something that they're already telling us. It used to be example indicators, is that what they were called? And they're no longer example indicators. This is what you need to know. And most of the social sciences, um, they started with, when it started, it was 191, and then they dropped it to 144, and then I think it went to 92. And when they went from that big number to the 92, they become very generic. Something like students will be able to um, distinguish between cooperation and conflict. Well, that could be anything from the beginning of time to, you know, what we're doing right now in Afghanistan. So you don't, I mean, that would seem to me to be a bit generic. I never really agreed with the social studies standards, but I'm not important in the last Department of Ed. So, but that we we do need to make that change. And, um, Mr. Janata teaches geography. That would start next year, you're saying? Then? Yeah. So. And those juniors would have to have it. I was going to say then. Because it is in the standards. And next year's seniors wouldn't have to? No, because they don't have to meet the testing. Oh, okay. Which I haven't figured that out yet either. But if we stayed at four period day, it'd be really tough to get that. Oh, 
Oh, uh, yes, it would. <laughs> and I'm not teaching economics. I think that's something else that not economics. Of course. Is geography a year class now? It is. But I talked to Mr. Donata, and I know a lot of schools have gone to putting it at five. And it is possible. Of, the, of all of the classes, geography is probably the easiest to make go, to go to five. And it works really well putting it opposite of that speech class. But I think world history becomes more difficult too. There's a lot of stuff out there for world history. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve adding economics to the graduation requirements. I'll second the president. Please it. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to add economics to next year's schedule. Graduation requirements, roll call. Vicki? Yes. Marilyn? Yes. Alden? Yes. Bob? Yes. Mike? Yes. Myself? Yes. Next item is discuss and act on joining the Nebraska Whole Child Project. I hope you read through this information. Can you tell me exactly what it says? <laughs> I did, and I, I think it's, it's pretty stupid. Yeah, what, it, I think what so. it says. Basically, it's about forming um, the, or the agreement and then forming the. Uh, what I want to say. The bylaws for it. So it, it doesn't say it's a whole lot. I did call uh, Mike Delaney from the, the School of Administrative Association. Just ask him. I said I don't really. I mean, I, I didn't see, see what, what was in it. Mm -hmm. and, and what he said is kind of what I said there. They, they want to have a little bit of, I think, teeth and maybe pursuing this and, and hopefully getting uh, maybe some funding and getting some emphasis on maybe some studies to push a little bit uh, to show that, um, you know, there is a connection between uh, student obesity and how they do academically. Uh, and that's really what they're trying to do. Gather, uh, not only gather the information, but hopefully get uh, have have an organization or a group to to maybe head that up where they will be able to maybe push a little bit, whether it's through uh, legislation or through funding, to be able to do that. So. But are they going to they can get into this? Are they going to require us to do, let's say, one of donation for each? Because uh, yeah. what he told me is there, there's really no, um, there will be no um, uh, financial obligations on this, what he told me. I think they're going to try to find groups, organizations that will you know, help fund it. Is what it is. I don't think it's a school thing. Well, to me, it looks like maybe it's something that might be better or different than, like you say, starting our kids and thinking just because we don't feed them, they're not going to be obese. That there's more to it than just that. And maybe this will get, bring something else up that will help. Sponsored by both uh, you know, the administrative group and by the, the school boards association, and, and this was really, and I'll be honest, but this is the first I, I heard about when I got the got the information on it. it. Isn't something that there's been a lot of you know things out here and said about it. So and that's why I called Mr. Delaney and asked. Does anybody want to make a motion? <laughs> Can we get out? I mean, is this going to be a yearly thing that we apply for, or once you're in, you're in? Or? I think the first one you're in there for two years. 
Yeah, if they're going to solicit funds and come up with projects, I guess. That's what you're, I don't know. Page two. I guess so. If we don't have a motion, it'll die. So. Well, the thing is, is they don't need all the school support to go on with it. They can go ahead and set it up and start their study. I mean, we aren't going to give them information anyway. Right away. Sure, whether whether we're a member or not, we'll be required to give them information if they decide they want information. Or we will be asked to provide information. I'll put it that way. Okay. Any no motion? <clears throat> okay, we'll move down to the reports. <clears throat> Mr. Frederick, do you have something? Pretty much everything that is in my written report, other than we changed uh, Jenny football to tomorrow night at 6 o'clock in Lesson, and tonight's junior high football goes to Thursday at 4 o'clock here. And we did that through the weather. We never get any results of volleyball games in the papers. There's no stats or anything. We are working on that. I got my first one this week. So I noticed it was in the North Fork paper the last one. That's the first one I've well, seen in I don't know how many years for volleyball. Hey, one. One. Did yeah. last year? Yeah. Well, there's been in the past. It hasn't always been in. I don't know. No. It, it's something we're working on trying to resolve right now. Okay. But I just think, I mean, even if they aren't winning, there's a player or two that have a good game, and you see that and read it, you can encourage that player, which gives them some benefit. But if you don't know how anybody did and they lose, who, I mean, how are you going to encourage anybody? It makes a lot of Graham and Grandpa's happy, too. Yeah, I agree. Because <laughs> then I don't care about it. So we're working on trying to resolve it. Okay. Speaking of Graham and Grandpa's, uh, <laughs> this one comes back to you, Eric. The, the railings in the, uh, where we are now. They are the ones for the gym? Yeah. They are ordered. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I don't know when they will be here, but they are ordered. Can we make a phone call on that? Yeah. <laughs> 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 We'd like to have them. After, after, you know, after we talked to him last time, he did call me, and, and I okayed it. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I'll talk to him. Just tell him to show it. Okay, my next question. The football, we, we started talking about that. I, I heard a comment from it. Uh, I just want to verify. We can still opt to stay eight man even though we may qualify, or this student tried to tell me that we didn't have that option. <laughs> <laughs> no, we can opt eight man, but we, you know, it'll be the same thing. We would we're just can't. Right now, there would be no state playoffs or. Is every game a forfeit? I mean, are we. If I lost, win or lose? What What's that? Mean? Is every game a forfeit, though? Even you win, it's considered no. a loss? No, we just don't. Yes, you're, you're not not the the playoffs. I didn't know if the team that got beat, you know, you could ruin their season by taking that loss mm -hmm. to a bigger school. You know, it's, uh, it's all based on your power points. And it would simply help out a school. We're, we go into the point system no matter what, I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. But if somebody else may make the playoffs, if we actually qualified up there higher, Look at saying that, right? Because we're not eligible. So there could be somebody with a lower point rating than us makes the playoffs. Right. We can't get in there. Well, then it's just based on the Division One, Two, Three, Four, goes by class.
Because we'll have. When do we have to? I mean, obviously, this is the second year. When do we have to make that decision? The lots have to be in by the first of November, and we have to make the declaration by the end of November. So that yeah, that's next. Well, we'd have to do that. Well, for football, we have to do it by the first of November this year. First of November is if you're in co-op. You're in co-op. Um, the thirtieth, I believe, is. You're declaring you're going to go 11 man, 6 man, 8 man. So we'll have to have that on the agenda the next meeting then? Or? That'd be November meeting, Mr. Frederick, then? Yeah, because it's due the 30th of November. I mean, the coaches obviously got their info, but we'll, we'll, I guess, yeah, we'll need to make that. Well, I'll probably have them ask the football coaches to come. Yeah, because otherwise, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming they're thinking we will, but otherwise, yeah, we, the field's not a big issue, but if we did go back, we'd... Yeah, if it's on the agenda, then we get concerned parents that can show up. Yeah, well... I, I know which way the football coaches are leaning, because I've talked to them before, and I'll let them give all that expression. Okay, well, we should just make sure it's somewhat publicized again, and... I don't think there'll be any debate on it, but uh, yeah, no, can, a, can a school, if they're eight men, can they opt to play 11 men? I saw that in the paper the other day. They can or can't? They can't. They can't. There was a, a ruling in 2007 that the paper quoted that said you can go down, but you can't go up. You can't go up. Because they have some of those classes. They said the, the rule was made about eight. Okay. See, I just um, read an article, and I think they said if you, I thought it said you could opt up, but you had to opt up in everything. You well, couldn't you just do it like for volleyball. Or you so couldn't do it for just for football. I thought it's what you they couldn't said. pick your sports to opt. Yeah, sure. You couldn't opt up in the A because you know, that goes for schools. So. And see, and I, and I think there's, I think they've done that like. In the metro area, I think some of the schools have opted up to state class A. And I, there's just an article in the paper, was it last week, that what, uh, was it Benson might be going down to B? I think it was Benson, okay, it's going down to B. But they would end up, and what I understand now, it would be they would have to go, but if they're going to opt up, they go up and everything. What's the same article? Well, the reason they might not want to, because if they go to they're A now and they're going to B. I mean, <coughs> literally, their state, their travel. I yeah. mean, but why would you want to opt to opt class? Too? So that they keep their schedule in Omaha. Like, yeah. oh, which is a lot of big schools. I think there, yeah. there was a time in Columbus. I don't, is Columbus playing B now? Yes. I believe. No. No, no they're still. No, Columbus, Columbus High. High. I think, they're B. Yeah, they're, I think there was a time they wanted to stay A, so they opted up. But I think they have gone down to B now. See, in Omaha school travel time, if they ended up out at McCook or Scotts Bluff or I don't know, they'll both be there. Well, that's their schools and these schools. Yeah, right. That's what I'm saying. They, they're, but anyway. Well, anyway, I just wanted to clear up a couple comments and obviously make sure we're publicized and where we want to be because if. The problem is your, your option for two years, well, it actually, I mean, it's going to be the coach's decision, I think, we'll, but I mean, in another year, say we are more productive and we have, can make the playoffs, they, you know, we, they got to understand they can't do it. I mean, this year's sophomores. You're still playing with a lot of youngsters. <laughs> but what do you do I'm, if I'm you... I'm still saying your sophomores, this would be, your sophomores will never be able to be in a playoff. My son would be a so uh, Junior, junior before he could ever qualify for playoffs. Right. So this year's fresh. Mm -hmm. What do they do if you co-op in that second year? Do they change stuff then? That's so like if next year we would co-op with another school in football, but not next year, the year after. I think we can. I think we gotta wait till the you have to wait until next year. If I'm reading or it, you, or you drop your program. What's that? Or you drop your program. Yeah. Were there five that did it this year, at the beginning of the year? 
there's simply a whole new. Place if we're not playing, we don't have enough of football on the board. Like library last year. They had the one in our league. There's no football. Uh, Newcastle, they were the other one. They're playing just a JV schedule with whoever wants to play. There you go. Well, I, you know, I, I mean, I'm just thinking that through, just so that they're aware that this year's sophomores would never be able to play a playoff game. The As coaches, seniors, the they the coaches are very aware of all okay. that because we've had many discussions. So yeah, well, but I'd rather have them come talk to you sure. instead of me trying to talk for them. And I'm just bringing it up here in this public meeting right is now. That, no. Is group. that because we have enough for eleven, but we opt to play eight? Or that's is that what we've done this. So this this is our school time. size. Yeah. Says our school says, says we should play 11, but we're opting to play 8. And you look at our enrollment, we'll actually have a potential maybe to go up a few kids in, in, in participation. Sure. And those kids, I mean, you can even say the freshmen. I mean, I, I'm just, as juniors, they still wouldn't be eligible for playoffs. I mean, you're kind of. Well, one thing I think you need to look at, too, is what are the teams that you're probably going to play doing? Are they dropping in size and quality when I mean, you have a chance to play and compete with those teams. Yeah, it's up to the coaches. Versus, you know, the way it's been. But I'm just you got to look at that, too. If they have a chance to win, why, well, you know. It'll be a tough decision for those kids because, I mean, it'll be, it'll be a tough if, – if, if they qualify for the playoffs in a couple of years and you're going to have to say, sorry, you could be 6-2 and two and you got a shot at playing two or three lines – I will tell you some of the things they're looking at are player numbers, player size. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know it sounds odd, but yeah. we're not sitting there with two 300-pound kids. No, I, 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 but you got to compare that with the teams you're going to be playing too, and see if you're comparable in those categories with other schools. More comparable yeah. in the next two years than what you were this two years. Well, you got a junior high team that's had best record, and and those kids. As sophomores, well, we've been there before with really good junior high teams, and we've usually gone through and, and done very well. Now the cycle's been through. So, so, so. I mean, they'll be juniors by the time they make the yeah. playoffs. But we've had some very successful sophomore squads, sophomore. I mean, because you you put the combination together, and, and we've had some very good sophomore junior. I mean, you look around; a lot of the eight men, they're they got a good. Freshman core that comes in, and that promotes them. I'm not trying to. I, I just want the. I just want the kids to recognize if, if they make that decision. And the sad part, yeah, if you go up to eleven man, maybe they. <laughs> I get the. Well, if we were, if we would have gone eleven man this year, there were times when we would have had to cancel games. And we yeah. Have to play. There, there's no debate now. I'm just. I just know there's a little bit of a, a number deal there. Well, there's, a, there's a 10 freshmen now, and we got 22 out, so that's 12 out of all the other classes. What, two seniors? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that's 10 between the other two. There's quite a few of the three in the Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I'm talking about the jun junior and sophomore class, there's only 10 out. So that yeah. means the next two years, you're only going to have maybe five seniors. So you Well, the coaches are bringing some numbers. I, I just. Yeah. I just want the discussion because we're locked into the two-year part of it. That's right, right. I'd be frustrated as as a as a, a sophomore on the team to recognize that I'd never. Have